Disney, Pixar, Up, Watch Doug, written by Jennifer Arena. Doug bounded over some rocks, scrambled up a hill, and crossed a little stream. The golden retriever was looking for a spot to camp for the night. Following him were his friends, Carl Fredrickson and Russell. Doug had met them in South America when Carl and Russell were on an adventure. Doug wanted to find the best camping spot ever, just for them. Around his neck, Doug wore a high-tech collar that helped him speak to humans. Find the spot, find the spot, he chanted aloud. Suddenly, Doug saw a good place. Point, he shouted. He froze and pointed toward a clearing up ahead. It had trees on three sides and a beautiful view across a valley. Russell and Carl looked around. I like it, Russell said. Carl put down a picnic basket that held their dinner and breakfast for the next day. Next to it, he placed a jug of lemonade. Okay, Russell, let's set up those tents of yours, he said. The day had been full of new sights and sounds. Carl, Russell, and Doug had hiked along a trail and climbed to a beautiful overlook. But now the day was over and the sun was setting. Carl and Russell put up the tents and unrolled their sleeping bags. They cooked dinner over the campfire, and afterward they roasted marshmallows. But Russell's yawns were getting bigger. It was bedtime. His eyes half closed, Russell started to walk toward his tent. Hey, look at this, he suddenly shouted. Carl and Doug went to Russell. On the ground, just past the campfire, was a trail of paw prints. They all stared. Doug sniffed the tracks. What kind of animal made these? Carl asked. A bear, Russell shouted. No, Carl frowned. They're too small. I'll check my wilderness explorer's handbook, said Russell. But Carl shook his head. Bedtime, he instructed. I will keep watch all night, Doug exclaimed. I will find out. Do not worry, I will not fall asleep. Good night, Doug, Russell said. He gave the dog a big hug. He and Carl went into their tents and zipped up the flaps. Doug was proud to have such an important job. He was going to be a super watchdog. Doug sat outside the tents, as still as a statue. His tail wanted to wag, but Doug wouldn't let it. But wait, what was that by the oak tree? A squirrel? Doug charged toward the tree and tripped over a rope on Russell's tent. Part of the tent collapsed. Doug hung his head. He hadn't meant for that to happen. He waited for Russell to come out. Then he heard a snore. Russell was still sleeping. Doug slunk back to his watching spot. He had made one mistake, but that could happen to any watchdog. The moon rose higher into the sky. Doug wanted to howl at the moon, but that would wake up Carl and Russell so he buried his nose under his paw. Then Doug got an itch on his back. He rolled over to scratch it. At that moment, a bat swooped down over the clearing. Doug jumped up in surprise. He accidentally knocked over the jug of lemonade behind him, and it spilled all over the ground. Embarrassed, Doug went to stand guard near Carl's tent. It wasn't as messy over there. Doug watched as the moon traveled across the night sky. All was quiet. Russell, Russell, Russell. What was that noise? There, by the picnic basket. Russell, Russell, crack. Doug sneaked across the clearing, keeping low to the ground. He spotted fresh paw prints in the dirt. Then he saw a shadow near a tree. Something was prowling. Now it was rummaging. Woof, 
Woof, woof! Doug barked! The intruder turned toward him. It had a black mask and a striped tail. It was a raccoon, and it was trying to get the food in the picnic basket. Not on Doug's watch. Move away from the basket, he said. That is our breakfast. You cannot eat it. The raccoon grabbed a string of sausages in its teeth. Doug took the other end. He tugged. The raccoon tugged. Doug tugged harder. The raccoon hissed. Doug growled. Finally, the raccoon let go. Doug had won. Defeated, the raccoon scampered away. Doug triumphantly carried the sausages back to the picnic basket. They were a little roughed up and dirty. A couple of leaves were stuck to the slobbery spots. But he was sure Carl and Russell wouldn't mind. Doug was proud of himself. He had spotted the intruder in the dark and scared it away. He had even saved breakfast. He felt like a top watchdog. Soon, the sky began to lighten, and the stars started to fade. Doug was very sleepy. His eyes felt so heavy. His paws felt so heavy. His ears and nose and tail felt so heavy, too. But he couldn't give up standing guard now. It was almost morning. Doug put his head down on his paws. He would rest for just a minute and then go back to keeping watch. Resting his head felt nice. Maybe he should rest his eyes for a minute, too. It was getting harder and harder to keep them open. Doug closed his eyes. He wasn't going to sleep, though. He was going to stay up all night and make sure Carl and Russell were safe. Nothing was going to bother them. Not as long as... Honk shoo! Honk shoo! Doug fell asleep. A few minutes later, Carl came out of his tent. He no longer slept as long as he used to. Carl looked around the clearing. He noticed Russell's tent and heard the boy still snoring. He saw the dirty sausages sticking out of the picnic basket and the jug of lemonade on its side. Carl sat next to Doug. Doug opened one eye. I found him. I found the creature that made the paw prints, he said. Yes, I heard you, Carl said. He gave Doug a pat on the head. Good dog. Good Doug. Is it breakfast time yet? Russell suddenly called from inside his tent. No, go back to sleep, Carl replied. After a moment, Russell's snoring continued. Then, together, Doug and Carl watched the sun rise over the misty valley.